Hello my soccer universe. Well, you thought I might be depressed? No, watch my video. I'm not... Yes, I'm a little bit heartbroken with Austria, but a whole different reason than uh, just the result yesterday. I hope it will accelerate the pro proceedings. No, if you have Germany losing to Northern Macedonia, I'm going to be very happy and I'm going to be very happy because that gives me actually an opportunity to wear this jersey that I really thought will only be hanging back there for most of the time. I'm wearing it at a video. I'm quite happy about it. And yeah, I'm also, you know, I look at this red jersey that I have that is strong, but I'm more and more uh, getting on board with the gray look as well. So yeah. But I have to say the overarching theme for me is that having three games within a week for on, on a national team level and you have no time to work you can see that this is taking a toll we got now especially match day uh, three we got a couple of upsets uh you could see that certain teams are managing very well uh we also uh saw some tur some turnarounds and most imp and most impressively i think the teams that don't play that excitedly they get their wins. However, the teams that try to go out and, you know, don't be smart about it, um, they keep on losing. And Austria is a prime example for that. A little bit Germany as well. But yeah, uh, I also think, I mean, I've, I've been saying Turkey, 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 Turkey. And then they, uh, they I mean, they don't lose, but they put themselves now again in, in a place where uh, qualification is everything but secured. But I think we jump straight into uh, the games. Uh, in uh, Group A, both favorites, Serbia and Portugal, got uh, wins. Serbia, thanks to Mitrovic, who has been absolutely sensational in this uh, break. Assisted by Tadic and Milinko Vesavic, and you're thinking, what talent does Serbia have? What they would need is really good co coaching. I think Ser Serbia uh, could be one of the uh, greatest teams to watch in uh, Europe, but uh, they, typically for um, <laughs> former Yugoslav teams, they can be great on one day and then they completely implode on another. It was a, more, a rather labored victory, which is also what we have to, have to say about poor Portugal, who completely, deservedly went down by a goal in the 30th minute by, with, uh, by Rodriguez, who already scored the winner in Ireland. Uh, but then they a little bit turned around on uh, Jota, gets equalized, and he seems, he seems to be the most um, consistent striker in the Portuguese team at, at the moment. Ronaldo, after the half, makes it 2-1. He should have made it 3-1. I mean, a Luxembourg defender plays a back pass right in, 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 into Ronaldo and twice he even gets the rebound, fails to score. And so it has to be a third goal by uh, Palhinha, who uh, gives Port Portugal the 3-1 win. But I think Cristiano still will not be very happy about that one. Um, Cyprus beats Slovenia. I mean, Slovenia, I thought they played super against Croatia. That is one of those. Then they had a pretty good showing at Russia. And then you play only at Cyprus, and while the game was uh, level not that great, a uh, great individual effort by Peters makes it 1-0, and Slovenia doesn't find a way back. And that's exactly the type of thing, if you want to challenge high, you cannot allow yourself to lose against Cyprus. Um, Croatia, though, bouncing back. I mean, not excitingly. They take a long time until Perisic make, makes it one, but then a Modric penalty and Brekele lay late on, make the scroll and against Malta uh, rather convincing. And then Slovakia, I mean, this group is suddenly wide open, as, uh, as, as we've seen later, beats Russia. And that came out of nowhere, because I thought Slovakia is really, really, really bad team. They just played 2-2 against Malta. Now they play, beat Russia. Skrinja with a great header, makes it 1-0. Um, Fernand uh, can equalize in the center, but right after three, right three minutes after, it's three. Um, it's Mark who makes it two one, not three one, and a really, really big win for Slovakia. And they're even here on the wall as one of the big winners uh, so far. Um, the Dutch also needed a lot, lot of time. Forty second minute, Berghoi scores, but then in the second half, all hell breaks loose, and Gibraltar uh, cannot really hang on. De Jong. 55th, Depay 61st, Vanaldum 62nd, Marlon 64th. I mean, this is 10, 10 minutes where they score four goals to make it five minutes. Then later on, Van der Beek and Depay get uh, two more. That was easy. And the Dutch, 
bad start. Slow, slow car. It's not great, but they're getting the wins uh, that they had and they need, and you stay a little bit in contention. Norway also pulls themselves back with a hard fought win at Montenegro. They were largely the better team, but uh, only 1 0 uh, Sorloth in the 35th getting that goal. And then, as I said, Turkey looked really really uh set to get an easy win over latvia uh they were two nil up at, um in the 33rd already through Chala, uh Chalanoglu, who scored a wonderful goal but then uh savalniks in the 35th pulls one back so latvia and you got got credit and they kept on fighting um uh, give up another penalty in the 52nd through uh yilmaz converts and you really think okay that must be it for, Tur for Turkey, because those three points were kind of vital after those great results against uh, the Netherlands and Norway. You need to keep, keep making points, but give it to Latvia. They fight back. Ul uh, Uldrikis in the 58th makes it 3-2, and then Ikanix in the 79th makes it 3-3. Three, three. Entertaining game, one that was not expecting a little bit of a setback for Turkey. You don't see Turkey anyway here and among the winners for match day three. Um, another low country team runs riot against Bel Bel Belarus, and Belgium did it actually smartly. I mean, uh, they did not convince in either of their pre previous game, but they got the win against uh, Wales. They got the draw that they were probably aiming for at the Czech Republic, a little, a little bit lucky. And then you play an absolutely, you, you change basically around all the players and you go to Belarus and beat them 8-0. Just what Denmark did at match day two over Moldova, uh, show that you have quite some depth in the squad. Uh, and you know, those hungry players really want to show that they can be uh, there in the first team. Uh, and it was young Doku who was uh, probably the surprise. He's 18 years old. He assists Bajuai in the 414, scores uh, himself in the 42nd to make it 4 0. Hans Van Aken gets his first goal also. Uh, in the 17th, Trossard and uh, Brett adds on Benteke, Trossard, and Van Aken finished the rather impressive 8 0 scoreline, which shows that at least attacking wise, Belgium has depth. I always say, um, I think the Belgians would like to have the Dutch defense and the Dutch would like to have the Belgian offense. If those two would unite, and we talk Benelik, <laughs> if those two would unite, I think this could be a hell of a national team. But, you know, not there yet. Um, Wales gets a rather lucky, lucky win over the Czech Republic. I mean, that game I watched because I think this was the only, uh, where, only one on Tuesday where you had two level opponents meeting. I think the Czechs were the better team, and even when they went down through a rather stupid uh, action by Patrick Schick in the 449th, I really thought that the Czechs were, were better. They should have gotten the goal. Uh, it just was saved. I mean, yes, uh, Gareth Bale just before half time had a huge chance for Wales. Um, and then uh, the playing field was level. Uh, leveled when Roberts with an elbow was sent, was sent, sent with a ye yellow red, but Wales gets the win. Gary Gareth Bale uh, is on, on the side, just quick turn, cross in, was a great cross, and uh, James can head, head it in and give uh, Wales a rather important victory. Very late, late on, all was a great save because uh, I think the Jacks thought they had the equalizer, which would have been deserved, but a big win for Wales uh, there as well. Uh, Armenia Romania probably was the most entertaining game. A perfect 3 2 win for Romania. Why perfect? And if you have been watching my channel, you know what I mean with a perfect result. Armenia take the lead in the, th in the, in the 50 second. I mean, the first half was kind of a little bit cagey. And why is Romania? Well, Romania and White does, doesn't make much sense to me, but okay. Um, take the, the lead in 56, but in the 60 second, uh, Romania can equalize. So uh, we had Armenia. Uh, one nil. Uh, then Kikal Dao uh, scores twice within ten minutes, sixty seconds, seven seven seconds to give Romania a two one lead, and they look really uh, conf conf confident at the moment. However, Pushkas uh, gets sense of a rather unnecessary challenge in the seventy seventh. Still, Romania looked like they could hang on because five minutes to go, two one up, you're fine. No, Haroyan gets the equalizer, and then they give up a penalty two minutes later, and it's three to Armenia. Perfect win because. With two lead changes, that's perfect. That's the, it's the most exciting way that you can win three three two because of the emotion of going up and going down again. Very 
very, very entertaining game, especially in the second half, with spectators, which added to the spectacle. And this Armenian team, might they make at least a run for the playoffs? Maybe even more, because as we'll see, they're at the top of the group, because Germany loses to North Macedonia at home. <laughs> And this is no April Fool's Day joke, absolutely not. Germany loses 2-1 at home to North Macedonia. Um, I think the Germans thought they will get an easy win. They hit the crossbar early on, had probably a few, few chances, but you don't make, make the best out of, of the chances and you're a little bit shaky on, on the back. Uh, and you know, also uh, Testegen needed to pull a few of yourselves. And then just before the halftime, Goran Pandev puts it in the net. Everyone for, forgot got about him, how he could sneak himself through the defense, pull it into the net. Then Germany, of course, angrily comes back. Uh, earn a penalty. Yeah, and Gundogan puts it home 1-1. One, one. And then Timo Werner has the chance. I mean, way too much time to think. He's alone if Ronald Gold just needs to hit the ball and he mishits it and that should have been a 2-1 and that would have put sense Germany on the way. But this again, the chances that you don't, don't make and in the 85th, Elmas gets the winner for North Macedonia. Lots of uh, pressure on this German team who seem to be well on the way, but you know, they always have this little bit in there. They, they, they remind me of a little, a little bit of a Balkan team at the moment. They can play great and they have a lot of talent, but they're not always putting it together. So yeah, uh, if Jürgen Löw wouldn't have said he steps down after, after the years, I think he would be under a whole lot of trouble at the moment. Iceland, uh, easy 4-1 win at Liechtenstein, uh, ever. Frick's goal for Liechtenstein was a, I think they call it in Spain, an, an, an Olympic goal, a direct corner kick, and he wanted it. You could see how he's aiming for the far corner. A wonderful, wonderful goal uh, for that. So that's the one you want to watch there. Almost was one, uh, almost one I want to put on the Liechtenstein jersey because of that goal, because it was really great. Greece, like uh, other teams, you got the point in Spain and then you cannot get the win over Georgia. When Georgia is not a bad team, uh, especially uh, this guy, uh, Kvaratskelia, I think we'll hear from him a little bit more. He scores the equalizer in the 78th and just a minute before uh, Kakabatze had made an own goal for Greece. From the highlights I could gather that at the beginning Greece was a little bit better, but then uh, Georgia came back. Um, it's lost points, absolutely lost points and uh, you, you're playing in, in the cards of Spain and Sweden, who didn't even play at that point. Uh, Spain avoided the diplomatic uh, crisis uh, because Spain doesn't recognize the Kosovo. They did play the anthem though, so yeah. Uh, typically Spain, lots of possession, but pass, 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 pass but uh, having a hard time breaking them down. However, uh, once Olmo did in the third, 34th, uh, Ferran Tor Torres could add in the 36th, and I think Spain is cruising. However, the goalkeeper implodes, and um, Halimi, he charges out, he's almost at the mid midway line, uh, way too more, more motivated, and, he and then he sees the uh, player kind of going for the ball, and this Halimi, going forward for a ball and chickens out for just a second and yeah, Halimi gets around him and puts it into the from far, 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 far out. However, Gerard Moreno adds a third in the 75th and Spain on the 3-1 win. Rather unconvincing, but who at this moment is very convincing? Italy surely is not that convincing. However, they get their wins. They get the wins and um, that's maybe the most important. At the, at, at, at the moment, this Italy has 25 games unbeaten. That's huge. That's absolutely huge, I have to say. Um, Stefano Sensi, right after the half, uh, gets the uh, first, first goal. Then Immobile should have had a, a second half hat trick with the chances that he missed. Um, he gets his with a penalty. So Italy on the way. Not convincing, but getting the job done. And watch out for this Italy team. Northern Ireland, Bulgaria. No, no, I definitely had more chances, but late on Bulgaria, sure, sure, it was a great uh, save by Peacock Farrell. Is that the name? It, 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 it's a great last name by Northern Ireland. Speaking of unconvincing, France doesn't have to do much. Doesn't really deserve to get the win, but they get the goal through Griezmann, who heads it in after Rabio corner. Um, and it's 1-0. And they 
eke it out and they get the win. And they are the only team that can see seemingly win in this group because Ukraine, although having many chances and largely controlling the game against Kaka Kazakhstan, getting a wonderful goal through Yaremchuk, have probably an even better shot uh, through Mushikov in the 59th, gets an equalizer for Kazakhstan. And uh, Ukraine can kind of find their way back, and you could see how Shevchenko was really, really irked by the result. Really, really irked by the result. I mean, Austria, Denmark, 04. <sighs> I watched that game yesterday, yes, yesterday until it was 3 0. Then, then I decided, nah, uh, enough. I have to say that for the first 20 minutes, Austria played almost like I would expect them to play. Really uh, aggressively pressing. Uh, and Denmark had some trouble. The problem is uh, that for all the press and for all the intensity, they didn't create any chances. And it, so it was actually Denmark with a little bit more chances in the first half. And I have to say, starting in the 25th, I th thought that Denmark got a little bit more of the game and could uh, outplay the Austrian press. And then Austria suddenly tried to fall back. And unfortunately, we have a goalkeeping problem in the sense that uh, the coach doesn't want to decide on a goal goalkeeper now he's been playing the last goalie three times in a row but you can see uh, he always has to play with a new set of defenders yes he's not in great for shape either and so it look it looks all a little bit shaky on the back I have to say um, although I have to say the lineup when I saw it Yes, maybe Grilic could have been put in it, but I don't know where. Lima is definitely missing. But I have to say the lineup is pretty much an ideal Austrian lineup where. <sighs> just play it right. Just don't play safety because if you just play for the result and the result doesn't go your way, you're not going to win. And you know, I said it already at the beginning, I am not too unhappy with this loss because I hope it accelerates. Austria losing and with North Macedonia winning I don't even think that Austria will get the target one win in the group stage which is such a low goal I cannot tell you how much as I said Austria fell back uh, had some trouble then with the Bill Biller play the Danes play 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 nicely and then with rather quick passes and, ca and catching out Austria the Austrian defender unfortunately Traun the last captain as well on the, on, the, on the wrong side they played really, really quick and fast. And then Skov Olsen, who just came on, maybe makes it 1 0. Mele, 63rd, 2 0. Uh, Heubergen, 67th. Uh, just. It, it was really well played by the Danes. Denmark, I think, is another one of those that. Uh, that's a team that's peaking at the moment. And Austria really got the whole brand of it. This, and I maintain, I think those two teams by potential should be rather level. Coaching and making weird decisions doesn't put them level and uh, the heat is on in Austria. The heat is definitely on because that result puts World Cup qualifying very, very much in danger and that's what they don't like at all. But uh, I'll talk about that. Israel, a rather easy form of win over Moldova in the end, but it came all down to a uh, bust up in, the, in midfield. Uh, where uh, Taha from Israel actually was the instigator, but then plays uh, the dying swan, and so Nicolescu gets sent off. I have to say, Taha should have gotten sent off for that one, for sure. Uh, and then in the end, it's an easy form of win. And Scotland also. See, you don't have to have that much trouble against the Fairy Islands as Austria did. Uh, Scotland, McGinn early in both halves, uh, says and Wade, and Adams with a really nice goal in Fraser. 4 0 win. And I would not be too unhappy if Scotland even finishes ahead of Austria. Let's see how this will end up. Hungary 4 1 over Andorra. I mean, what would, what would we expect? Although Andorra got points from Hungary not too long ago. England against Poland. That's what I ended up watching and when Walter flipped over from Austria. Uh, for what I could get in the first half, England completely dominated Poland, who uh, were kind, of, who really didn't wanna uh, be much on, on on tech, and England get a penalty that Kane can convert. Um, in the second half, suddenly Poland is more aggressive. Milik comes on, and that actually changes the game. Uh, together with Moder, uh, Milik presses uh, high on um, uh, John Stones. Uh, Hulu, Hulu's ball, and Moda can uh, put the ball in, in the internet. And the game was rather open. I think at the point, especially at the point where I flipped over, the commentator meant, uh, I think that this draw for Poland is not undeserved. 
in the end though it is England who get the win uh, with John Stones making good on his mistake by really striking stri stri himself to head the ball back to Harry Harry McMire after a corner, corner kick who puts it into the net and gives England a rather big 2-1 win because that win more or less and you see England up here second spot more or less shows that they are um, well on their way to the World Cup in a not so easy group. Albania then gets the 2-0 win over San Marino so let's see where things stand at the moment and you see I have uh, chances for winning I made it there was a whole lot of programming uh, uh, while Wales and the uh, Czechs were playing and also the early game uh, between Slovenia and Cyprus yeah I watched that one too I had it on while I was programming let's put it that way uh, in group A uh, Portugal are the favorites to qualify Serbia uh, for, for, for the playoff spot, uh, but it's I think it's one of those where um, Serbia is definitely not out of it yet. Uh, Group B, Sweden much more in game so far uh, as Spain. Spain has of course a game played, and you see the star next to Spain, meaning they are un uh, they are one of the Nations League group winners, and there's a ranking there um, from League A, B, C, D. Uh, where two of those group winners will actually make up the spots in the playoffs. So I want to mark them because you see that they have actually a little bit higher chance of making it into the playoffs. So Spain uh, looking at the moment good, but Sweden I think has a very decent chance. If you look at, we, at winning the group, uh, it's not too far apart. Uh, similar story for Italy over Switzerland, but Italy has been very consistently um, making uh, their points. So. Italy looking good. France, if you're the only team that can get wins in the group, then of course France is gonna uh, dominate the, 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 this group and probably don't have to do much, just keep, uh, pu uh, keep on pulling out uh, dirty wins and you will qualify rather easily for the World Cup. Group E has three Nations League group, uh, group winners, so we might see all three of them uh, uh, two, one qualified and the other two proper in, in the playoffs with the Czech Republic and Wales in there. Belgium really, really dominating this one. Uh, Wales, given our, since they have the win over the Czechs, give a slightly higher chance of, qual of qualifying, but they are still behind the Czechs because they have a game less. But that was a big win. Denmark, pretty dominant position in that group. And honestly, at this point, I don't see anyone in this group who can really hurt Denmark. Maybe the Scots a little bit, but not really. Denmark, the class of the group. Austria falling down, but look at the chances of making the playoffs. This group, winning that group, was actually a pretty big deal, one has to say. Uh, saving Austria. The Faroe Islands will probably not make it in there, but you know, who knows? <laughs> uh, stra strange things might happen. Um, Turkey, who has been flying, is now suddenly only second favorite behind the Netherlands. And that group is rather uh, open, I have to say, because Norway also has a chance, Montenegro hang, 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 hang in there. But it's in, in the end, it will be between the Turkey and the Netherlands who will get the win in the group. Another really open group is Group H. Croatia, losing to Slovenia at the beginning, doesn't really matter because Croatia is all the way up there. Uh, now in first place because Russia cannot get the win over Slovakia. Slovakia also put themselves in there and Slovenia, the, vi the win over Croatia didn't mean much. So Slovenia trending really, really down here. However, they won the Nations League group, so a slight chance of making it to playoffs. Uh, England of, uh, also clear favorite in this group at the moment. That win over Poland was huge for them. And there's a reason why, why, why they're num num number two. They really uh, ra uh, ramped up their chances of, qual of qualifying. Um, Germany, only in third place at, at, uh, at the moment. They are not even in the playoff picture at all, if it would end right here. Armenia is a surprise leader there. And Armenia, I, I, I said it before, that's a team that I think really could spring a, a surprise. Not sure about North Macedonia quite yet. Germany will win this group. I cannot imagine anything else. So I think, the, although it seems to be a very level group, the, the levelness is really for the second sp uh, spot and who will make it into the playoffs. And speaking of the playoffs, at the moment, everything uh, as, if things are as they stand now, or end as they stand now, we have the following playoffs. We have Serbia, Russia, Sweden, Switzerland, Scotland, Hungary, the seeded teams. Then the Czechs, North Macedonia, Netherlands, Ukraine would uh, be unseeded. And then on the UEFA Nations League spot, Wales and Austria would just sneak in there as well. I am planning to do maybe a, a quick summarizing video with, with, with a bit more stats 
on how things changed in these match days to really see who are winners and losers um, in each of the, these groups. I just don't want to make the video even longer than it will be anyway. Next match day is beginning of September, a long time to go, but uh, let's see, we have Denmark, Scotland, that I think is one to watch out for, Norway, Netherlands, already a big one for the Dutch, they definitely need to win, but also for Norway, so uh, that will go a whole lot, a long way, Russia, Croatia is a very enticing tie, Slovenia, Slovakia, yeah, they, they play against their two neighbor nations that sound very similarly, but in completely opposite directions of Austria. Sweden, Spain, I think it, it, that's a really, really big, big, big one because if Sweden can get a result again against Spain, they look really good then. Uh, there's nothing here in uh, Group E. Hungary, England, uh, classic from the 50s. I want to see what North Macedonia will do against Armenia, but I think Hungary, England would play uh, get precedent over that one. So yeah. Match the threes in the, the books, as I said, I probably will do a quick round, a round of video. Um, if not tomorrow, you'll get it on, sa on Saturday. Um, also another national team jersey collection video, video before we move slowly into the uh, club season again. In any case, let me know what you thought about the games of match day three. Um, how you think your team's chances are or... Uh, how you see other uh, uh, games going uh, or groups going. Give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!